for anybody who is an entrepreneur or wants to be an entrepreneur, the most important thing is to start collecting your ideas as you get these aha moments and like inspiration that come into your mind. And over time, you'll have this massive library of ideas that you can always draw from. Hey everyone, welcome to Virtual Coffee Break with Bubble Up. I'm your host, Krista, and today I am interviewing online entrepreneur, Kristen Wilson, who is here to tell us all about how she, as an entrepreneur, is working on several projects at once, something that's really common for lots of entrepreneurs, and she's going to teach us all about how she stays organized and gets all of it done. So welcome, Kristen. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. So this is Traveling with Kristen, that's her uh, online personality, but she is an entrepreneur, a course creator, a blogger, a writer, and a book author. She's also got two YouTube channels and a podcast, so not to mention she's in content marketing as a consultant on the side. Um, so yeah, needless to say, this girl has a lot going on and a lot of different projects that she's working on at once. Kristen, how literally, how do you do it? How do you stay organized and not lose all of these awesome ideas that you have? I think the most important thing is to start collecting your ideas because I think a lot of entrepreneurs have a lot of ideas and a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs do too, but they don't necessarily know what is the value of their ideas or they might be working in a different type of job where the ideas that come naturally to them are not as relevant. So for anybody who is an entrepreneur or wants to be an entrepreneur, um, the most important thing is to start collecting your ideas as you get these like aha moments and like inspiration that come into your mind. Because as we know, they can be fleeting. You can have the idea before you go to bed or while you're out for a, a walk or something like that. So you just want to collect them. And over time, you'll have this massive library of ideas that you can always draw from whenever you need something. If you need uh, content for a blog post or a business idea or a YouTube video or anything like that. And so I started collecting my ideas a few years ago in my notes app, actually before I started creating content when I was just working mm -hmm. in real estate. When I started um, organizing them into different folders of like different topics of whatever made sense. And then over the years, I've built up thousands <laughs> of ideas. And now I use Bubble Up actually, which has a desktop app and also a mobile app because it allows me to save my ideas and like categorize them into folders, but also to include like links and videos and pieces of research. And then the app will also like suggest other related links. So if I'm researching something for my book or for a blog post, I'll find different sources and then I can collect them together. And then when I'm ready to use them, they're there for me. So I think just knowing that your ideas do have value, even if you only use like one out of a hundred ideas, at least you mm -hmm. have them there. And then later you can connect the dots and like categorize them um, with other ideas and link them with different projects. And you never know what's going to come out of it. That's the beauty of life and creativity. These things happen spontaneously sometimes. Nice. Well, first of all, you just said that very poetically. So it was really nice to hear you say it in that way. But I love what you said about how you can connect the dots looking back. Um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, they, they come up with their million dollar idea, but if they don't keep it anywhere in a place that they can go back and find it again, they, they might lose it. How do you choose what to do first? So you've got like, you know, as you said, maybe you have a hundred different ideas and there's only going to be one that's really going to be sticky or relevant at the moment. So how do you choose? Like, how do you know which ones to work on? Well, if you are uh, categorizing your ideas and collecting them, you're going to notice some themes that come up over time. So I think the first time that I wrote down um, something about starting a podcast. It was in like 2014, 2013, oh, wow. 2014, something like that. 
And then I kept like adding notes about podcasts, like different podcasting apps. I, I wrote about them in 2016. And then I started my own podcast in 2019. So sometimes you need to like take time for those ideas to seed and then the timing is right to like take action on those. So at the beginning, I didn't know that I was going to be like writing and doing videos and podcasting, but it just kind of like happened organically. So now that I have like quite a full plate of, um, of different tasks, the most important thing is to be prioritizing on what's most important to you. And so mm -hmm. not to spend all of your time like in reaction mode, reacting to other people's requests, whether that's answering emails or responding to comments, is just to be really clear on what's most important for you to do. Not just that day, but that week, that quarter. Um, I'm really, active in a weekly mastermind. Actually, I'm in two masterminds now where we set our goals for the week. We review them every week. And then we also do a quarterly review and an annual review. So just being aware of like your goals and then taking actions on them, like breaking them down into smaller steps, that really helps me to um, make progress and know what I should be doing at any given moment. And then I take it even a step further on a micro level throughout the day by making sure that I conserve my peak hours of the day for my most important tasks. So I might have a block of like three or four or even five hours where I'm just in deep work mode, like working on one thing. And then I'll take breaks and I'll get to like the shallow work administrative stuff during my least productive hours of the day where I have the least amount of energy. So that's really important for um, everybody to find out what are their peak hours of the day and to kind of play around with that throughout the day, focusing on your most important tasks and um, getting momentum with just one thing. So even if you want to theme your whole day, like, uh, emails on Mondays or writing on Wednesday or phone calls on Fridays and just like picking mm -hmm. one day for that thing. TikTok Tuesdays, who knows? There you go. And, and, and just find what works for you. But um, always put your goals and priorities first and then everybody else's second. That is also a great tip. And what I really like about that too, especially because the story that you told about how you had your podcast idea, you know, years ago, and it actually ended up taking you, yeah, maybe four or five years for it actually to come to fruition. I, I think at least for me, that's, not, that's a really reassuring story because maybe sometimes we feel like we, um, if we're not executing on our ideas, then it must mean that they're not good or they're not relevant or whatever. But yeah, it sounds like there's really so, so, so much value in, in, in organizing your ideas from the very beginning. So you can always just go back in, find them as soon as inspiration strikes you again. And uh, yeah, then, then make it happen. So really, really cool story. Yeah, we're so lucky now with all the technology that's out there. I mean, I still have actually have a legal pad on my desk because I still have like analog stuff and in my to-do list sometimes I like to write things out but there's so many journals I have from like 10 years ago and I don't even know what kinds of ideas are in there because I don't have them mm -hmm. with me I can't search through them but once in a while I used to like find old ideas and I forget that I even had them so now to be able to like keep them top of mind and, and keep them in these apps, it's really, really helpful. Yeah, it's cool that you can kind of see everything all at once and just kind of go deeper into the little pockets of ideas. So Kristen, if anybody is watching this and they're curious to just learn more about how you actually say organize your folders or store those ideas in your notes, is there a way that people could reach out to you and maybe ask you some questions? Uh, what would be the best way for them to find you online? Yeah, maybe I should do a video on this actually, like how I organize yeah. my notes. <laughs> Definitely, I would to love to see that. that. So the best way would be um, to follow my work would be through my podcast, which is called Badass Digital Nomads. And then on my YouTube channel, um, Traveling with Kristen, and also on my website, Traveling with Kristen, and Instagram. Everything's either traveling with Kristen 
or Badass Digital Nomads. Even my Facebook group is called Badass Digital Nomads. So there's a lot of places to uh, reach me. I'm, I'm one of those on all of the social media platforms. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show, Kristen. It was really fun doing the interview. And I know I learned a lot, so hopefully the audience did too. And uh, yeah, just thank you again. Thank you. Let me know if you have any questions, guys. And remember that entrepreneurship is the long game and creativity is just part of life. So always keep going. Words of wisdom. Very good words of wisdom. Yeah. Thanks again, Kristen. Have a great day. Cheers. <laughs>